My name is Walter Kmet. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Macquarie University Hospital and Clinical Services. Macquarie University Hospital has had a very long history in robotic surgery. Um, it's a hospital that's about 10 or 11 years old. And in fact, uh, right from the onset, uh, the university invested in robotic technology with the Da Vinci platform, the SI Da Vinci platform, uh, almost as soon as the hospital opened. So hospitals had a complete history with robotic surgery from that time. Uh, it added to that platform in 2018 with the new uh, Da Vinci platform, uh, the XI platform in 2018, uh, and also then added further by uh, the uh, investment in the Versius CMR robotic system in 2020. We now have two uh, state-of-the-art Da Vinci XI robots here at the, at the hospital, uh, as well as the robotic system that's in place with the Versius CMR robot. There are other uh, robots that are uh, less capable and uh, probably less uh, high-tech that we also have that are in place uh, for knee surgery and the like, uh, but essentially they're the main robotic platforms hit that we have here at this time. The mainstay for robotic surgery has been urology uh, for prostate cancer in particular. But over the years, that's expanded quite significantly. We use robotic surgery for gynecology, upper GI and colorectal surgery, as well as uh, cardiothoracic surgery as well. So the robotic surgery has expanded quite significantly in terms of not only the number of cases, but also the breadth of interventions that we can do with robotic surgery. We've had over 4,000 thousand cases over the course of 10 years uh, done at Macquarie University Hospital with a minimum invasive and robotic surgery. And in that regard, uh, there's quite a, a significant uh, broad range and, uh, uh, and, and complexity that we do undertake. Patients naturally take advice from their special surgeons uh, when they need to have surgery or they need to get advice. So uh, that's probably the starting point. Patients do listen to their surgeons and the surgeons who have access to robotic surgery often give patients the choice to uh, undertake that surgery via minimally invasive and robotic surgery. So that's probably the starting point. However, patients over the years have become more and more literate in their own right. They do research, they look at the options, and they often ask surgeons about what options they have even before the surgeons present them. So uh, I think uh, the key issue here is in terms of choice. Uh, the choice that surgeons have to use robotic and minimally invasive surgery uh, is something patients can benefit from. And also, indeed, surgeons can benefit from in treating their patients and uh, being able to do that in a way that's safe, uh, up to date, and of course, uh, uses all of the technology that's available. And that technology uh, has expanded. Uh, the techniques for the use of that technology has expanded. What we've seen in Australia is uh, an expansion of the application of robotic surgery to many specialties. And uh, that experience has been... Uh, seen overseas, and we're seeing that in Australia, where uh, perhaps uh, robotic surgery is focused on urology and prostate surgery is now expanded to many, many other areas of surgery and specialty. Uh, and with the improvement in techniques, uh, with uh, the fine tuning of uh, the kind of equipment that's used in robotic surgery, we're going to see more and more of that. And certainly we have seen that at Macquarie University Hospital, where patients are afforded the opportunity and surgeons are afforded the opportunity to use robotic surgery for a range of procedures uh, in, in, in areas and new areas such as uh, uh, cardiothoracic surgery. And that, that minimum invasive surgery really does make a difference uh, to the patient's uh, outcomes and recovery uh, and gives, as I said, the surgeon and the patient choices around what they might do in particular cases. I'm pleased to say that Macquarie University Hospital really has been at the forefront of giving new surgeons and existing surgeons experience in robotic uh, techniques and uh, robotic platforms that we have here, uh, probably more so than most other private hospitals. In fact, probably more so than most other hospitals in the system. Uh, we've been uh, using uh, various uh, uh, ways to uh, improve our uh, training and education of those surgeons over the years. Uh, in more recent times, uh, live streaming of procedures, uh, webinars that are based on real, real cases, uh, uh, you know, are, are taking place. Um, obviously, surgeons do work within their own peer groups. Uh, they go to industry and scientific conferences and get exposure, but uh, there's nothing really like the exposure of real cases taking place and surgeons being able to be involved in that and see what happens uh, from, from surgeons that are experienced, uh, being proctored by those surgeons, both by video link in more recent times, but also face-to-face. 
uh, and a program also where we're able to use our uh, teaching laboratories for procedures to be undertaken on uh, cadavers and uh, in, indeed in, in areas where they can learn their skills and fine tune their skills before they actually undertake uh, real life surgery. Robotic manufacturers have been working with us for 10 years uh, on many aspects of the implementation of robotic technology. Obviously, there's a business and financial relationship in ensuring that when we implement such high cost and complex uh, pieces of equipment, that we can make them financially and commercially viable, but also make them safe and provide the best possible quality care. And in that regard, uh, in more recent times, we've worked with manufacturers, for example, to implement a robot, robotic specific operating theatre where we only do robotic work and we work uh, with the manufacturers to how that's laid out and how it can be best used for best possible outcomes for patients and indeed for how surgeons can work most effectively in those areas. So there, there are numerous areas we work with manufacturers in uh, as we have talked about the issue of teaching and training is critically important uh, and manufacturers are very uh, critical in, in terms of providing those programs and supports for that to ha happen in a, in a productive way. Robotic surgery provides a clinician choice and in providing the clinician choice around how they might undertake certain procedures, whether they do it in a traditional surgery sense or through minimal invasive surgery, they also provide the patient choice. So choice is a very important aspect in robotic surgery. Uh, there's also uh, an aspect of robotic surgery, which is minimally invasive. And in that respect, it provides uh, potentially better recovery after surgery. And in some aspects may also provide better long-term outcomes, particularly with prostate cancer surgery. Uh, robotic surgery uh, assists surgeons in being able to undertake very complex and strenuous cases more easily. And I think that's also appreciated by surgeons. And if surgeons can concentrate on that surgery without being concerned about how tired they are and how the surgery might, how long the surgery might go, it often leads to better outcomes for them as well. Macquarie University Hospital has been committed from the onset to be a leader in technology, uh, also a leader in patient care. And I think putting together technology and patient care is right in the middle of where we think the robotic program sits for us. Robotic surgery is a new technology. It has uh, a, a clear and defined future. It has grown and has provided a greater scope of interventions for us uh, than we would have otherwise dreamed of. And I think that has been very important for us to be able to achieve our mission of being able to lead the way in technology, but also to lead the way in patient care. Mm -hmm.